If you go back to old science fiction stories about what robots were going to be like, they were going to be like people. They were going to do the tasks that people do the way that people do them. And that did not come to pass at all. A good part of the reason for that is robots tend to have a very primitive sense of touch. One of the things that you cannot do without your sense of touch is manipulate objects. You don't do that by watching them. You do that by feeling them. Most robots currently, when they manipulate an object like this, this coffee mug, they'll reach out and make a firm grasp on the, on the mug and the object just follows the hand. But if you look at what humans do, there's lots of things we can do besides just pick things up and carry them around. We can throw and catch them, we can push them over surfaces, we can tip them. And my research is focused on how to give that kind of capability to a robot manipulator. When I use my hands to pick something up, information about that object is distributed across my entire hand, and I'm synthesizing all of that information into one coherent picture of what's happening with the mug. I'm holding this nice and stably. I have great confidence in my ability to do that, and yet all I see is my thumb. All the fingers are hidden from my view. I know where they are. I know how they're interacting with the cup, and that's all because of touch. We do a lot of things like that where the information we're getting is from a part of our body we can't even see. First of all, there's just the information about having established contact. A lot of our experience, like certainly when we're walking, there's a tremendous amount of importance in just knowing that you've made contact with the ground. When I hold a cup like this, I don't bear down on it like a robot might. I hold it lightly as much as I need to. And that's because I've got sensors that tell me how much the skin is being stretched and if there's any slippage. There's the thermal sensors, which tell you whether the coffee is hot and nice to drink or whether it's days old and lukewarm. Being able to feel when it starts slipping, that tells me that I need to react and catch something. There's a lot going on, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, just when you grab a cup of coffee. This is our robot hand that we're using for manipulation research. This fingertip has actually a fingernail back here against which the fluid inside of the pouch is pressed. The tip here itself has ridges on it, much like your own fingertip does, and the ridges allow you to detect slip. And then we also have other sensors that are detecting the amount of normal force and the amount of sideways or shear force. There are hundreds of thousands of nerve fibers in your hand, and somehow the brain is taking that sensory information and also all the motions that your hand is doing and integrating it seamlessly. One really large challenge for robotics is the sensor fusion problem. The computer has to somehow process tens of thousands of channels of information in a way that is coherent and can be acted upon. So in our lab, we've developed a new robot manipulation system based on a seven degree of freedom robot arm, our robot hand with the tactile sensors and a high speed surround vision system, collecting images 360 times a second. This part of the project is focusing on the high speed vision aspect. We really want to track the motion of the ball, match its speed, and then balance it, all using vision feedback. Eventually, we'd like to be able to do something like throw an object to the hand, have it grasp it, be able to manipulate it within the hand. What I need to be able to do is measure the normal forces, how hard I'm pressing against the mug, as well as be able to detect when it begins to slip using the high frequency slip sensors. When all of those things are integrated, we hope to be able to accomplish tasks like the one I just showed you. Robots are already much better than humans at some things, uh, particularly things that involve strength, precision. But when you look at the flexibility of the human, that's where the robot is going to take decades to catch up. As automation and robotics progressed, what happened was that rather than adapt the robots to the tasks the way that people do those tasks, the tasks got redesigned so that they would be accessible to robots. Ultimately, robots have to exist in human environments. We build tools that humans use. 
We design cars so that humans can drive them. So the ultimate goal of our research is to give robots the kinds of manipulation capabilities that humans have so that they can manipulate the same world that the humans are existing in.